Hey everybody, hope you're all having a great day so far. Mine has been pretty good. Got quite a bit done and now I'm ready to do some fun projects, so that's what we'll do tonight. Um, still more on Tactical Lizard Tamer, our Pokemon slash Fire Emblem on a chessboard type game with modding and multiplayer like always. So right now we're working on the terrain map still and we want to do something called a height map, which um, Basically, we'll give every block a texture, and then for each of these vertices, we'll either move them up or down depending on how white and black the texture pixel is at that position. And it will kind of tile over these hexagons like the um, actual um, color map does. And the reason that I decided to do this instead of letting mod authors give, like, I don't know, specific models for the top is because this way um, the texture can loop over multiple uh, hexagons at the same height and also it will blend smoothly into different types of terrain. And that's the idea anyway. So we'll go ahead and start. So yesterday we of course finished making these triangles, and now I want to try and actually read from the texture. So before we import the texture, um, I'll go ahead and create the code for that. Alright, so really just every time we create uh, when, every time we get one of these corners, we're going to need to also read the height. But we want to do it here, because we'll want to do it here when we add the triangle. In fact, I might even add a separate function, like add a bump triangle or something. That will do the same thing, except perturb these corners a little bit. Although, uh, let's see. No, I better just make a separate function that's, I don't know, get bump or something. What do I, what do I want to call it? This is the vector flat position. And then we'll need to also give it... Oh, hey, Ice Boy. Glad to see you here. How are you doing tonight? We'll also need to give it the, um, the cell right here. Or how about we can just do the actual um, block prototype. So all we have to do now is just create another vector 3 and then we just change the y position by a certain amount based on this prototype. Okay, so I guess this will be color pixel equals type map. We want to get pixel by linear. Okay, so now we have to convert the this vector, which is in world position, somehow into this texture position. E equals flat or let's play new vector two flat position x flat position z. Then we'll want to multiply it by some um, value. Right now I'll have it match. Um, it's basically going to work the same as it did in the 
Jade are here. Then we get the world position. Then we want to uh, multiply it by some terrain stretch factor. I guess I might as well add that, or add that up here. Public float. This will be the height map stretch value. Base metrics, height map stretch value. And so, and now we also need, well, no, okay. I was going to say we need to clamp this or have it loop around, but I think get pixel by linear will do that for us. We can test it, of course, but. And, um. That's good. One thing is, like, these textures, I think this might be kind of slow, but we can always fix it later. I will, I'll just leave it like this, um, for simplicity. Okay, and then the bump position, we just basically take the red value of this, because these height maps will be in grayscale. So red will equal blue will equal green, obviously. So we'll return to vector 3, flat position x, um, flat position y, times pixel red. And so the p color will be between 0 and 1, and so we kind of want it to be able to perturb the y both directions, so we'll multiply this by 2, and subtract 1, so now it's between um, negative 1 and 1, and then we'll also want to multiply it by some uh, bump height, so height, map, bump, length, That'll uh, basically determine how um, high each of these bumps will be. I'm doing pretty good, Ice Boy. How are you tonight? Okay, so I think this is fine. And so now I just need to pass this bump position our call bump position basically every time we call this function. And I have to pass the prototype, which is just our cell. Okay, and I do the same thing down here. Glad to hear it, Ice Boy, no problem. And I guess I should also bump. Oh, wait, no, I don't have to do the center because it's created down here as well. That was relatively simple. Now, do I actually store this height map yet? I'm not sure. Okay, I do. Okay, so for now, I guess we can just use... Well, no, let's go ahead and create a separate height map. I'll just use black and white, and then we'll just create a new... Um... What do you mean? New texture here, which will just be a checkerboard. Kind of boring, but it's the best way to test things out and easy to make. So it's render pattern checkerboard. Oh, it's too small. I think I did 32 before our. It was 64.
Well, I guess it doesn't really matter that much. Then we just export. Go find the folder. The lizard tamer. Um, I guess I'll put it in assets. Yeah, the mod assets, and we'll just do it like that. So this will just be a um, height record board. I'll just do one for each. We'll want to test blending, but since they're not different colors, we'll have to have actual different textures, which we'll get to that. Okay, now one thing I just realized is that these values here should actually... Yeah, these values here should probably go on a per block, um, per block um, basis instead of just being global because every block can have its own texture and it doesn't actually make it any more difficult for us to allow every block type to be able to set it. And I could, like some rocky terrain, you might want to have a higher bump length then I don't know, something smooth like ice. And the stretch value doesn't actually matter at all, except for your specific texture. So I think we might as well do that. So I just need to move this out of the board metrics and into the block prototype. And mesh generator, instead of just calling the database metrics, we just call the prototype. So yeah, it's pretty much the exact same code. And so now for the mods to be able to set these values, we need to add it to the mod table of contents. Actually, it won't go in the table of contents, it would go in the block prototype. I was hoping at least a little in it. Um, lastly, we just need the asset organizer to pull these values out and put it into the game logic. I have a specific organizer just for the block um, prototype, so we might as well use that. So if the mod data height map stretch value, I guess we'll want it to be Less than or some very small value, we'll want to throw an error. I like that, that's probably fine. As bad height map stretch value. And if it passes that, then we can just pass this through to the game data or logic data, as called it. And we'll do the same thing for the bump length. Um, except, I guess this is still true. We don't want it to be. Well, no, this could be zero. We just don't want it to be less than zero. That doesn't really make much sense. Although, I guess it wouldn't really cause any problems. If it was negative, it would just be inverted. Yes, yeah, so we'll actually allow that. Now, that's all done, and we just need to add actual values for that in our mod files. So if we open up block prototype file, so I want to change this from dirt checkerboard to height 
Check our board. Same here. And all the stretch value and wait. Our bump links. Uh, let's set it to just I don't know, point five or one two five now. And just for some variation, let's make uh, the stone more bumpy so I'll have a double the bump length. So I'm compiling, let's see if this works. While waiting. I'll write a little note here. Check if get pixel by linear low. I think it might be as I know get pixels is very slow, but I'm not sure if it'd be too slow just to get one pixel at a time. But um, if it is, all we have to do is just transfer the texture into a uh, um, to uh, 2D array, and that will be fine. That actually would probably be more efficient because we can throw away all the other values besides the red, but what was I trying to do? Oh yeah, I was thinking while I was talking that one other thing we need to check in the asset organizer is we have to make sure that the um, Height map texture is also um, able to be read during, um, or by the game logic during runtime. Sometimes um, textures are not able to be that. I guess there's no way to test. Okay, I guess we can't actually tell if a texture is read only or not. The only way I can tr test it is we'll do a try catch. I don't know what error we'll throw. Actually, let's not do that because I don't know what the error will be. So we'll just call this get pixel zero zero and if I okay, do that. If it's not read and write enabled, then obviously that would throw some error. Test that then. So we have the height checker board. And since this is not a color texture, it's actually like a data texture, we want to turn off this sRGB. Doesn't need mitmaps. So right here, this read right enabled, we'll need to turn on, but I'm going to leave it off for now. No, I don't want them up. But like reset everything when I added it to the asset bundle, it's kind of... Okay, so let's rebuild all the assets. I can't do it right now. I was going to go ahead and open the folders. So I'll need to copy things back and forth. Still thinking. I like five things in the asset bundles. I'm surprised it's taking so long. Next. All right, so we got to subdivide this for margins. Not too difficult, but it'll be a little bit more math. 
Oh, and I don't uh, allow mods to specify that yet. I should have done it while I was doing the other mod stuff, but okay. Done yet? Yeah, there we go. So, I'm going to explore. And I'll need to have another um, file open, so let's open a new window. That's what I was looking for. And in streaming assets and the test content mod, I'll just need to over. Okay, so now everything's set up. And if we press play, see if, um, if what error is thrown when I try to read that. Yeah, the texture height checkerboard is not readable. So I think I can do a try catch. The Unity exception. Okay, so if there's an exception here, then we know that the texture is not readable. And unfortunately, we can't set that here. It has to be during compile time, I guess. So, uh, block prototype. That. Um, Read, write, disabled texture as height map. Then we can pass, we can might as well just pass it the height map name. What happened there? Cleaner. Okay, so let's try to run this again with the error and just so we can check to make sure that getting caught correctly. Yeah, so now we got a mod load exception instead of the Unity exception, and that way it will be thrown to the server and everything. Okay, so now, unfortunately, I've got to rebuild the bundles again. Hopefully it won't take quite as long, but I just need to set read write enabled. Apply. Assets. Build asset bundles. Well, I guess I can write while that's going on. Well, I might as well just add the ring number in here while we're waiting. So public. So block hexagon subdivisions and block margin subdivisions, I think is what I'll call it instead of rings because that makes a little bit more sense to someone who doesn't know how that code is written. I don't need these. On the asset organizer, I just Go ahead and pass those values through. I will need to check if they're valid though. So, um, yeah, if it's less than zero, that's the only time we want to throw an error. Add block x of divisions. Pass that through exactly and do the same thing for the margin. Copy too much there. Okay, so done. Trying to reload asset from disk that is not stored on disk. So 
Okay. Did it? I wonder if it went ahead and piled it correctly anyway. High check report is in there. Okay, well, I'll just take my chances. If there's a problem we know, we'll just have to recompile it again. So the one other thing I need to do is now that I uh, specify those subdivision values, I need to go ahead and add fields in here. Okay, so let's do three and I guess zero right now for the margin. Although obviously we haven't even implemented that yet, so it doesn't make any difference. Okay, so let's try it now. Add a height map stretch value. Oh, this is not correct. I just, uh, I guess I just went on autopilot and didn't check these names. Fix the names there. Something should actually be set so it won't complain about it being zero. Okay, so something went wrong, obviously. Hmm. Strange, I don't. What could have gone wrong? Because all I did was change the Y position, so if there's anything... Okay, well let's test one thing first. We just won't even use the color. Oh. I forgot to add the flat position dot Y. Or Z, I should say. I don't know why it even let me use this constructor without three arguments, that's kind of unsafe. And this should actually be adding instead of multiplying that. Okay, there we go. Although it's in it. Rings aren't. Okay, well, it's still flat, but also it's not being subdivided. So we have two issues. Did I. Got this wrong? X subdivisions is set to three. Unless I spelled it wrong. This is the framework mod, so that's what it should be pulling from. Oh, I actually set hex rings twice here, so it is um, overriding it. That should be margin rings. There we go, so it's subdivided again, but it's still flat. So either 
not getting perturbed by the texture or it's having either this value here is too small or this uh, color is not being read correctly. I guess I should let's just print out the pixel. It's going to add a ton of um, <laughs> debug logs, but we'll be able to see if we're actually getting useful information here. So it's going to take a lot longer to load because of that debug log. That's just how slow it is to write to this thing. That's crazy. On Unity, you can do it. I didn't think it would take that long. I guess it makes sense because we have to... I mean, this function does get called a lot. Okay, well, I'm going to restart it. I don't know why it's taking so long. Uh, one second. All right, so it's starting back up now. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so obviously we don't want to print out every line here. So let's um, how do I want to do this? Okay, um, let's just add everything to a string and then we'll print it all out at the end. It's a little hacky, but since Unity is running a little slow tonight for some reason, just string. Add. Let's do something like this. String format. So we'll want the UV, and then we'll just take the red, and I'll add a space at the end. That'll be fine. And then when everything is done. Go ahead and debug a string. Right, these nuts. Um, is modding part going to be players can use the map maker in game, or they mod their Pokemon through a form thing in the UI? Um, yeah, the game won't have like an in-game editor, although I probably will make an editor that you can run as a separate program and then import. That's what I'm planning to do anyway. Really? Why is it? Okay, so I didn't like that either. Alright, so one second again. 
I don't know why Unity is being slow tonight, I apologize. Maybe, did I somehow introduce an infinite loop? I'm just deleting the test string things, so it's not going to work well. the debug log in there. How silly can I be? Okay. Um, yeah, so I defeated the purpose because I have the test string, but then I still called debug log right there, so it was still logging to the debug console every time it called that function, which Unity really didn't like. So let's try it one more time. still hanging. One unity, it's not that difficult, is it? Alright. Something different. Oh, it came back up. I was about to stop it again. So let's go look for that log three. Okay, so here is Oh yeah, I call that one for each chunk. So UV zero. It's actually giving values here, although they're all really small. Oh no, it goes up to one at certain points. So there's definitely variation because we can see one and zero. So why is it not being reflected? Here in the data. Oh. I was going to look at the map database or the textures, but it doesn't um, display correctly. Look at the block prototypes here. We can see the height checkerboard is black and white, so that should be fine. Oh, the butt map links at zero. Okay, yeah, this is what I was trying to see. That would explain it. <laughs> okay, so... So let's get rid of this. I just yeah, I need to do that. Okay, so why is it zero? Did I misname something else? Hit map bump links. I bet I copied over the correct value again. Yeah. While I'm here, I want to make this board metrics class serializable so it will show up in that um, debug window. Okay, so there we go. Everything is being bumped. It looks kind of bad right now because the margins don't are uh, don't move, but we can see it definitely has a square shape from the checkerboard pattern. And obviously, you wouldn't want something this regular, but at least we're actually getting some variation. And we can see that the stone tiles are higher than the dirt because they have a bigger bump length. 
Alright, so I just want to see here. Yeah, we get metrics class is not visible in here just for debugging. And the bump map should match up pretty well. Yeah, it does. It matches up exactly with a color map. It's kind of a strange effect, doesn't it? Alright, so now we're done with that and we're ready to start adding, um, subdividing these margins. So we're going to have to draw some more diagrams here. So we're not using any of this. Wanted to copy that. So first we're going to tackle this margin here. And if we use our good old purple dots again. So we'll definitely want points here. And then if we had three rings, then that means that at this point we'd have two extra um, points. That. Then let's say that we have um, two extra rings in the margin. To add like this. And then for every intersection there. And how would we actually do the triangles? I don't like this because these are squares and that's not going to look good. So I guess I need to offset them. The only problem is it'll be a little strange unless there's an odd number. So maybe I need to enforce an odd number for the margin rings. What we do is... Uh, yeah, these aren't evenly spaced at all, but you get the idea. You know what? We have this drawn up here. Let's take these shapes. them down we can just reuse that up to the front it's a little harder to see the purple now though I guess. A little better. So I'm trying to see like the relation these hexagon margins and then also these triangles. I don't really want them to like like there has to be a there has to be an edge right there does there. Have I named the game? Not yet. Right now, I just I'm going by the name Tactical Lizard Tamer because I'm thinking it's going to have like Godzilla type monsters, but um, I haven't thought of like the final name yet. No. Guess that that's probably how we're gonna have to do it. So there'll be a straight line there. Yeah, it's not too bad of a name, but I don't know, it doesn't have that. Um, I guess it doesn't really have any catch to it, although it does roll off the tongue nicely. Okay, so here the triangles will be a little simpler. Like 
this. Obviously a point there, and there, and there. So, triangle like that. There's still squares, but I think that we might have to just live with it. So like here, make these triangle shapes. I think this will, yeah, this should be okay. I mean, this is a square shape that we're gonna have to cover instead of a hexagon, so it can't be like all pyramids and triforces like this was. That does look best with this low poly style, but it's not possible. Luckily, these margins aren't huge, so. So we have a triangle like that. This. Right there. So we have this diamond shape right there. That's okay. Yeah, that's pretty simple. And then here, have something like that, and another one here, and like this. Okay, yeah, I think this will work okay. And it should still get some good detail. Okay, so I guess we're gonna have to have an odd number of rings no matter what. And, um. So across the margin. The um, points are determined by the action, by the hexagon rings because the number of points here is the max rings plus one. Then inside these points will be determined by the number. Well, the number of margins actually doesn't affect these rings. It would just be the same. The odd rings would be minus one, and the even rings are equal. Then in the triangle number of points is the two hexagons and then the number of even rings. I'm not sure if any of this is actually making sense, but I think when we start coding it, it won't be too difficult to visualize. Not visualize, but too difficult to write down. So here, we won't need, need this add quad function at all anymore because we actually won't have any more square shapes. It will all be triangles because we're going to build them like this. Decide the best way to do it. Maybe we should just store. I'm gonna go back to the diagram. So the rings, I think, will actually just refer to this even, these even lines, and then these extra odd lined rings will just be implied. So if it's zero, there's none, and if it's one, then we'd have actually three extra lines here. Oh, and another thing we're going to have to worry about is we'll have to figure out the averages for these colors and things. I completely forgot about that. Um, but yeah, that won't be too difficult to do. Just trying to think of now the best way to organize this code. Let's move this bump position here. Yeah, make margin. 
I use create for the other function, so let's try to keep the names um, assistant. Private, wait, create, margin. I guess I'll call it that. And we won't want to have to calculate all these neighbors again. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? Cell index, side, and then we don't need to have this make triangle, but we will need to know the, the ring. So should I call this whole part one ring and then this part ring two? So these, let's just go one row of triangles at a time, kind of like we did last time. So I'll make these first. Yes, there's actually got these triangles. Then these triangles, and then uh, and then we have this weird side one. But I guess we could do the sides first. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, for here, these points will start on the near side, and they'll go halfway. Okay, um, let's get some little starting points like this so I don't have to calculate them a bunch of times bunch of times here corner a basically corner point side and then we have to lerp based on the ring I can actually copy a lot of this I don't need this right now. So yeah, cell and then the neighbor cell. Okay, and the near alert value would be divided by the margin rings because we're trying to figure out the percentage of this margin that these points start at. So we want it to be either zero when we're on ring zero, and then one, uh, one half when we're on ring one. So it needs to be a ring divided by margin rings plus one. In the my cell. And then the far alert value is one half when we're on ring zero, and one when we're on ring one, so we just need to add one right there. Yeah, that's right. And then we'll need like a mid LERP value for this. That's pretty simple. It's just the average of the near and far LERP values. So again, we're trying to make this triangle, this one, and this one. What games am I using for inspiration for the map? I can't decide if hexagons or squares are better. Um, right now I'm mostly using like Civilization 5 and 6. Um, I like the tactical combat in that, and it usually just gives more... Um, 
Well, I think the maps tend to look a little bit more natural because hexagons are closer to being circles and also um, have a little bit more options to move around. But really, I mean, there's pros and cons to hexagons or squares, so I think you can make a great game either way. In fact, like, Fire Emblem is all in squares, so... <laughs> to be honest, I mostly just picked hexagons because I thought it would be more fun to program. Okay, so anyway... Earring Saga. I haven't heard of that one actually. Oh, it's one of the older Fire Emblems. Oh, that's interesting. I'm looking it up on Wikipedia. It's a tactical role playing game created by the creators of Fire, em Fire Emblem after they left Nintendo in 2000. Uh, yeah, I'll have to try that one too. Hexagon mobile game, you want to make Fire Emblem game afterwards. Yeah, it's pretty fun to do this. I would recommend it. And I've learned a whole lot about um, making this uh, train mesh. Or yeah, a whole lot just from making this train mesh, I, I should say. Okay, so anyway. Get back to the math. So we basically, we need to figure out these points just by lurping between the corner A and corner B. As I said, or it could be up here. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to find is I need to lurp between my point and the neighbor's point. Or my corner and the neighbor's corner, I should say. I've already figured out the code for that up here. So the near corner A is either in my corner at the side or the neighbor's corner. Flip around or rotate four times clockwise. Look up here to. So if we're on corner zero, we want to get the corner directly across, which is four on the neighbor. So we've got to go four times around. And the next corner B is either one time around for us and then three times around for the neighbor. Already wrong thing. That math up top, so we might as well reuse it. And then the far alert value is this exact same thing, or these exact same points, except we'll use the far alert value. And it's just trying to find. Um, back over here. It wants to get this line right here. Okay, so now that we have all the corners, we can start. So how many triangles are here? It's the number of points minus one. And the number of points, so let's see. We have four here, that means we have one, two, rings. So yeah, this is... Uh, I guess I figured it out. I want to make sure I get this math right. Points on the outer edge. That would be these. Yeah, so that... Wait. Okay, well, I'm not counting triangles, I'm trying to count points actually. So it'd be one more than a triangle. So yeah, it's the the ring plus two. 
Hang on. Uh... Oh yeah, I did count the points, but I actually need to count the triangles, so... Talking in circles here, but it's actually these number of points minus one. So it's actually the number of rings in the hexagon plus one. So less than database metrics. I feel like once we do this one time, it will <laughs> make a bit more sense. So the margin ring. So we start here, gotta go clockwise around here, so I'll start on this point, go midway, and back down. I can call this again because the whole point is we want to have the bumped position. Except, oh yeah, we're gonna have to interpolate colors and everything. Let's see, um, well, the inside ones would just be the near alert value, but then we need to get this border alert value. Oh no, it's just the mid one. We already have that for this line here, because since we're adding points here, we'll need to know the Alert value it there as well. I guess I'll also go mid corner, although the name corner doesn't make much sense, but what mid point then I guess. So I could, um, like instead of calculating this side a million times, well, they're just talking about it, I guess I will pull this out. So this will be neighbor side A. Now every time we do the side plus four mod six, we can just pass that value in. And since we do calculate that four times, I think it is um, a good uh, thing to do. And it's, I want to at least do one row of triangles. Okay, um, so yeah, we have all the points we need. So the first point down here, so we want to loop, it needs to be zero on the first triangle. So we want to go with, yeah, this is like a special case for the center. But yeah, it's just T, like most of the time it's either T or T plus one, depending on if you want it to be zero or one at the end. Or zero at the beginning, or one at the end, I should say. First one is... But we don't actually call the ring, it's actually based on the... X. Wrong there. Why is this mad? No argument at oh, the prototype. So I can do my cell prototype. Okay, so that I just realized one problem here is that right now we actually just give it the prototype, but we're going to need to interpolate between two prototypes. 
Maybe I just need to make a separate function of separate value of this. That takes two prototypes and then a LARP value. Okay, so every time we call these, we have to take the average of them, given this LERP value. And then what we would... Oh no, we take the color of each, and then we average between those based on the LERP value. Yeah, that's right. This is Proto A, A, Play. And I'll copy this again. So you yeah. And that's the height between or the raw height I guess between negative one and one is I guess we'll start with between 0 and 1 is uh, pixel A plus will be divided by 2. Oh, and then I just want to take the red value. Pass that in there. Oh, right, I'm taking the average. I need to lerp. Go and then I also need to learn between the height. I'll call it that. Let's call it the length. This would be the prototype A dot bump length and put a B dot bump length lerp value. And now that and neighbor cell prototype and this would be the near lerp value. Gosh, this is being not clean. Okay, so the next one is this point because we got to go clockwise around the triangle and so at one it's like offset by a quarter so yeah it's supposed to be halfway between here go ahead and copy this first to get things started So we got alert between the midpoint A and the midpoint. In fact, let's just leave it here for now and let's make sure that all this that I've done so far works before we try and do this slightly more complicated point. Last one is again we alert between the near corners. But instead of just dividing by t, we do t plus 1, so that way... Yeah, that's correct. That way, how you can tell is that on the very last one, it would equal 1, which is what we want. I just got to do these colors. For the first triangle, the color is not... Good. Um, I guess we can actually just figure it out here. And again, if um, you're new to the stream, these colors tell the shader how much of each um, texture to blend at this point. So if red is full, that means only the first texture. 
and then the blue value is the second texture. We don't have uh, our, sorry, the green value is the second texture. For triangles, we'd use all three, but have to on these square margins. Here, color. Kind of just these lerp values. I guess that the near would be the near corner. Or no, the near lerp value. Then one minus the near lerp value for the green component. Zero for And I think it'll be the same for all of them. Far and mid. Except instead of using the near, we'd use the far values. Okay, so, since points 0 and 2 are on the near line, we can pass the near color and on the far line. Okay, and then this part just tells the game which or the shader, which textures each color corresponds to. So the red um, is this first texture, and then green is the second one. So they don't have to be lerped because it's just it's the same for all, any of them in the margin. All right, so I think now we're done with this. Yes, yeah, so I've got to comment all this out. We'll add that back in later. Print i equal zero i less than database metrics uh, margin rings. It'll be less than or equal because there will always be at least one. Margin ring, cell index, side, i, and I think that's all we have to do. And right now I'll go ahead and leave the margin rings at zero so we can see if it works like that. Do we have any errors? Yes. Oh, it just hadn't compiled yet. So let's hopefully there's not anything crazy wrong. One problem. Oh. Okay, so we're further complicated because um, sometimes these prototypes can be null if it's a border cell which doesn't have a prototype. Uh, how did I deal with that before? Uh, I call this get terrain index and it did a fallback. I can still use that. Guess I should cache the value. So neighbor terrain. Well, in fact, I can just save this whole vector 3 because it's the same for everything in here. My cell. We always know that our own text, our own prototype is not null because we checked that earlier. Why is it not? Oh, it's block, not prototype. Index. Row. That's uh, fine, but. I guess we'll also have to do some kind of fallback on this bump position. The prototype A should always not be... Yeah, we'll just assume that this prototype type A is never null. Okay, that's fine, we'll just leave.
Alright, if Proto B is null, then we just won't do any of this LARPing. I guess I'll need to declare this height and length before. And if it's null, then the height is just pixel A red, and the length is just the prototype A bump length. Okay, so that's good to go. M to two. Then compiling, of course. Okay, well, that's something, I guess. Um, well, no, this actually is working how it's supposed to. But these triangles are a bit small, aren't they? It should, it should go a quarter up the margin. Oh, I actually should check something before I turn it off. I need to make sure that the margin rings are zero. Yeah, that means that it's just gonna have. I'm gonna call this once to create the entire margin. The far alert value. Oh, this says hex rings. Um, that was the problem. Everywhere else should use a hex ring. Or anything that has to do with figuring out the number of triangles uses a hexagon, usually. Yeah, this looks better. Goes halfway across the margin and things are kind of blending. Why is this? This is backwards though. That might be easier to figure out once we do the whole thing. Seems to only happen on some sides, which is a little strange. Or maybe it just always happens, but some sides have the right... Yeah, it seems like it happens anytime there's a neighbor of a different color. Because we don't notice right here, for example, because they're both the same color. Why is it reversed? Oh, I did the... Yeah, this the one... This should be negative one there because... The near alert, this is zero um, on the near side, but for colors we actually want it to be one on the near side because it says um, full red, which means only the first texture. Okay, so yeah, that was just uh, I thought that it looked reversed. Yeah, that looked, that's much better. And back we can see the bumpiness of it. Okay, so let's try... I'm just about out of time, but I did start late, so I, I think I'll go on a little more. I think most of these other triangles will go by fast. Um, 
Yeah, the way I drew these triangles is wrong. This should actually go this way. Like that. But I guess we'll actually do these triangles first, and so it's just one less than the ones we just did. And it's just kind of flipped, so it's not that difficult. Oh, well one thing before we do that is we need to figure out... Right, this position is... It's as if um, these points are over here, so we need to figure out halfway between these two. It shouldn't really be that difficult, but maybe it's because it's getting late for me, but not immediately obvious. So we just kind of need to like move this half. So can I just do T plus one half? Oh, that might work. <laughs> right up. So right now it looks like a sawtooth, but it should be more like, um, yeah, actual equilateral triangles. Okay, so yeah, that did work fine. That was something simple. The next one. It's just one, there's one less than we had before, so just hex rings. And the first one, let's start at this point and I guess go around like that. So it's the same as before. Oh wait, no, we're actually making this. So yeah, we'll still start here, but we'll go around like that. So actually it's the same point so I can just copy this middle. And then the second point... Oh wait, I'm actually trying to make this triangle. Gosh. But anyway, so we'll start here and then the second point has to go clockwise. It's also there on the midline. But need to add one because it goes over to the next, so we actually go plus one and a half. Is that right? Oh, let's try it out and see. I think that it might we might overshoot. The last one this point. So, or it was same as here. Yeah, it was already there. I didn't need to move it again. So, yeah, the first two are the mid color and then the near color. Let's hope I did that right in my head. Okay, I guess so, because we've got a complete corner, or a straight edge. Okay, yeah, right here you can see this is like the space where the triangle is supposed to be. Yeah, so it's these three that we just created, and it matches up right. So I'd like to try and finish these sets of triangles. Be relatively simple. The next one, the first two are also on the same points as before. Except in order to go clockwise, we've got to insert this point between them. And it's actually just the same as this one, except on the far side. 
so not too difficult. We can just flip the round. Yeah, far. Good. Uh, this shouldn't be near there. Yeah, the color is messed up a bit because I left near alert value. This should actually be mid alert value. Did I do that here as well? Oh yeah, because I noticed it was flat, okay, so that's why we weren't actually LARPing the uh, height map. Okay, so anyway, mid, mid, and far. And this is mid color, far color, mid color. All right, let's check that out. Okay, so now we're starting to reach across the void to the other hexagons and looking good so far. We just have this last row, which is almost the same as first, first loop. And yeah, so everything is just kind of mirrored. Instead of starting on the near point, we start on the far. So if we do that, so clockwise we do the far far and then this midpoint. I'm actually making this triangle right here, but all I have to do is just change that. And uh, copy this up and then change the near to far again. Arrange the colors a bit. Where they match up. And I think that's all. there we go so we've got reached across the margin and we have just these empty spaces where they actually look like hexagons right now but so we need to create um, these two triangles which are kind of a special case because they're shaped differently maybe did they go across good question we could draw them if we want to keep the edges going the same way, which probably look better, we could draw them like this. The only problem is that now they approach on the this margin triangle, which we handled separately before. But I guess we could just have this part be part of the margin now, and then and the triangle just doesn't draw these. That's probably what we'll end up doing. Oh, do. This, uh. shape. Okay. Not sure if it was a shape or a path, but I didn't know if I could add points to it. We'll do something like that. on this can't actually tell because it's below the triangle Wait. down I 
like that. Okay, so this is actually how we'll separate the um, quote rectangle part of the margin from the triangle part. And um, I guess I should edit this also. I remember what I'm going to do. The triangle now encroaches on the neighboring rectangle. And this is different. Well. Okay, so now um, I need to stop soon, but I want to do these two triangles. So we add them to. Oh, this will be simple, actually. Um, just in both of these, I think we just add plus one. And I'll actually overshoot the. Um... Uh, well, maybe we. I don't know, I'll have to see at the, about the math. Because it might shoot out too far into the side. So oh, there they are right there. Okay, I don't know, we'll look into that. Um, so I'll just revert this. Six dead. I liked that song too. Oh, good night, Ice Boy. Thanks for stopping by. Good night and good dreams. So we're almost done with that. Um, let's just finish um, margin quad triangles, which approach margin. Okay, well, this is a little confusing, but I think I'll remember what I mean. Okay, well, we've made some good progress. Got, yeah, a bumpy terrain map now, and also quite a bit of the margin done. But yeah, I've got to stop now. I've already gone 15 minutes over. So we'll do some more work. Uh, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow at around 8.30 Eastern. Um, if you missed any of this stream or any previous one, I will upload them all to YouTube, so you can check there. Um, if you want to be notified when I go live, feel free to follow me here on Twitch and also Twitter. I do tweet when I go live there. And um, also I have a Discord channel if you'd like to chat with me and other viewers at any time. We'd love to have you there. To get to any of those links, you can um, type exclamation point YouTube or Twitter or Discord and chat. Or check out my channel description or video description. And yeah, that's it for me for tonight. Uh, thanks everybody for coming out and watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you have a great day. All right. Bye-bye.